after all that racing, time to switch to cricket on the Sportsmag Zone. England dominated day two of the crucial fourth Ashes test being played at Old Trafford. Gerard Morsili has a recap where Zach Crowley Australia was the star. Australia started the day on 299 for eight. And after losing Pat Cummins with the day's first delivery, Mitchell Stark managed to squeeze in 36 runs. But Australia were dismissed for 317. Chris Rhodes completed a demolition job, taking 5 for 62. Baz Ball has come under much scrutiny throughout the series, and it didn't help with the early loss of Ben Duckett. Stark has his first. What a performer he is. But Moen Ali and Zach Crawley were bent on proving critics wrong. The pair shared a second wicket stand of 121 runs. Crawley brought up his half century shortly after lunch with a score on 79 for one. It's reverse swept and that'll be a half century for Zach Crawley. Ali followed suit with his 15th yeah. test half century. Oh, and yeah, Josh Hazelwood. Now it's actually Pat Cummins. Crawley continued with aggression and his century came up in 32 overs. His Carved fourth away on the contest. offside. Crawley will sprint back for two surely. His fourth test match hundred. Joe Root replaced Moen Ali at the crease and the usually conservative batsman was on the accelerator. Root with another boundary before England went to tee on 239 for two. After the interval, the former captain brought up yet another half century with this boundary taking just 45 deliveries to reach the milestone. Crawley had one eye on a double hundred after passing the 150 mark, but his demise would come 11 runs short. Bowled by Cameron Green oh, for a well played 189. Round the wicket and short has eventually worked for Australia and Cameron Green. One wicket would bring two as Joe Wood was outdone by oh, a low delivery from Hazel Woods. Kept a bit low that. Basball's deputy commander, Captain Ben Stokes, continued to attack the enemy. And England ended the day on 384 for four, a lead of 67 runs. Ends with a dot, England end a fabulous day. What a day of cricket they have had. Yeah, brilliantly put together piece by Gerard Marsili. We have Fazir Mohammed joining us now to look back at the second day of the fourth Ashes test. And Faz, how good was this England side on day number two? They were absolutely dominant. And it's not too often that you see an Australian team looking clueless. Well, that's the way they look today on the field. It just seemed that they had run out of ideas, whether it's the absence of the experience and the calming presence of a Nathan Lyon, whatever it was, uh, there really can be no excuses because uh, England from bowl one, when they got that wicket of Pat Cummings uh, with Jimmy Anderson finally getting a wicket in possibly his final test at Old Trafford, his home ground, from that point on, it was essentially all England. And credit to them, they continue to play this way. It's worked for them more often than not. And in this all-important Ashes series, from their point of view, uh, they're keeping it very much alive. And it seems that the only real challenge for them for making it to all is going to be the weather at the weekend. Yeah. Was there a predictability about the Australian bowling attack today, especially um, or, or maybe magnified by the fact that there was no Nathan Lyon? I think there was, um, and, and we can't overemphasize the absence of Lyon because you'll have to remember that he was also injured during the course of that second test and Australia still held on to win it despite losing him uh, for much of the latter part of the test match and indeed the final innings of that test. But, but again, there's a repetitiveness about it when you, you have a situation where you don't have that, that specialist slow bowler. And we saw Travis Head coming on to bowl a few, which was a, a sign of desperation, of trying to mix things up and break things up, break the rhythm just a bit of the England batting. And uh, again, even with the early success, um, um, Mitchell Stark again, very effective with that swinging new ball. It's just that England are coming at you. And uh, as we look at Moeen Ali playing a few shots as well, Again, that number three role is so vital in Test Match Cricket and he played it to perfection. He's a really elegant batsman and it allowed Zach Crawley to continue to, to play shots. And anyone looking at the numbers of Zach Crawley will be saying that he's very lucky to still be playing Test Cricket with the number of failures that he's had. But England believe in him and it paid off today. Yeah, and speaking about paying off um, that magnificent 189 of 182 balls fast, talk to us about his innings, what we saw from him, and so much we can learn um, from a West Indian perspective where our batting has been, you know, not doing well. 
But, but that's the challenge, Mariah. I don't think we can learn much in the way that Zach Crowley bats because, again, England are a confident team. They may not be always a winning team because they rest remember they're still 2-1 down in this series, but they pulled one back. And when he came to the Caribbean last year, uh, you'll recall that, again, the questions were being asked, what is Zach Crowley doing in the England team? Because he's loose outside the off-stump. He edges into the slip cordon very easily, and invariably, he goes cheaply. But with the new dispensation, with Brendan McCollum as the coach, with, uh, with Stokes as the captain, and the, the, the message is clear. Look, you play your game. If you have to slash over the top, slash over the top. If it's there to be hit, hit it. Because release those shackles and that fear of failure. And in Zach Crowley's case, I think it's working at the moment. And even if he fails, he knows that he's not going to lose his place. In the West Indies situation, it's very different. You have a team that is struggling. You have a team that has players who, are, who really are lacking in confidence, lacking in those big scores that they could look at to boost their confidence. So it's unlikely that you'll see them trying to do what Zach Crawley did today. Yeah, Zach Crawley averaged uh, 28.65 coming into this uh, fourth test, but what a knock it was from him today, coming off 182 deliveries, and it has really given England a chance to push for a victory, even with rain expected on the last two days of this test match. Let's move along then. The 100th test between West Indies and India commenced earlier on Thursday at the Queen's Park Oval in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, and it began in a similar similar vein to the first, India dominating the first session after being sent to bat by the Windies. West Indies fought back in the second session, taking four wickets for 60 runs, but India regrouped after tea, taking the score to 288 without losing another wicket. There you have it, Jaiswal 57, Roy Sharma getting 80, and Kohli um, re well, stabilizing the innings with 87, and Jadeja unbeaten on 36 alongside him. Um, still a lot of batting in there for the India team. And to look at the West Indies bowling on on day number one of this test match. Roach won for 64 from his 13. Joseph none for 72 from 15. Gabriel won for 50 from 12. Jamal Warkan bowled a lot as you would expect of your leading spinner. One for 55 from 25. Jason Holder won for 30 from 13. Athanas got a ball none for 12 from his four. And the captain Brathwaite um, none for one from his two overs. And Faz, the West Indies showed some fight after lunch on the opening day but the quality of this India team um, just telling um, in the final session especially the great man Virat Kohli and that's the thing Ricardo uh, the West Indies were so poor in that first session that they had a lot of ground to make up and they did brilliantly in that second session, we heard Shannon Gabriel speaking at the end of the day's play that uh, they were all over the shop in the first session, but at lunch, they sorted it out. And, I, and again, I, I raise that point to say, does it have to take a session for you to, uh, or break and play at lunch time or tea time for you to work things out? Players should be able to sort themselves out on the field. And if it sounds exceptionally harsh, it's because this is what international sport is all about. In other sports, you don't get a time out at all. If you're losing 3-0 in a football game in the second half, you don't get a timeout to resurrect your situation. In cricket, you do. But still, West Indies should not have allowed it to run away so much in that first session. Half volleys, long hops, uh, short and wide being put away. But again, it looked very different in that second session. Not just the pace, but look at the bowling of Jomel Warwick and a beautiful delivery to get Rohit Sharma. And again, at Queen's Park Oval, you will get a bit of turn, not raging turn as we saw in Dominica on day one. But certainly the fast bowlers were disappointed with the nature of the pitch because Wesley won the toss and chose to bowl first. But still, they had India, when this wicket falls, of Ajinkya Rahani at 182 for four. And that was a critical point. And then came that final session. And you saw that experience, as you mentioned, of... 
-hmm. Yeah, that experience and quality of Virat Kohli looks as if we have lost Faz Mariah and Lance. I wanted to put this question to Faz, whether he was surprised. And it might sound like a ridiculous question, given what we have become accustomed to seeing in the Caribbean as far as the nature of our pitches. But I wanted to get from Faz if he, th if he was surprised at how slow the surface was um, to start this test match. I was surprised because I thought that at least some effort, some serious effort would have been put in to liven up the pitch. But I understand that, look, I, I'm no pitch expert. I, I know nothing about it. Uh, you can't change the nature of a surface in a matter of days just by allowing grass to grow. It takes time. So uh, rolling and constant rolling and preparation. And there have been showers. Uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, in Port of Spain uh, for, for days leading up to the test match itself. So that might have hampered preparations. But even before that, Ricardo, even before that, surely there has to be a desire to prepare pitches that provide a pace and bounce, not just for the fast bowlers, but for the batters as well. Because you saw Roy Sharma off the front foot pulling Kimar Roach for six forward of square. The modern Indian batsmen, quite unlike previous eras with one or two notable exceptions, aren't necessarily intimidated by short pitch bowling, by fast bowling. If it's really quick, well, maybe still. But in a case like this, and certainly in Dominica, I'm sure the Indian batsmen wanted a bit more pace, wanted a bit more carry, wanted a bit more opportunity to play their shots. So definitely for the bowlers. So yes, to answer your question, I struggle to understand what continues to be the rationale by the officialdom of, of Caribbean cricket, in this case Trinidad and Tobago cricket, to present a surface like this, given what we experience in Dominica? Yeah, one final one, Faz. Were you part of the boycott? Well, yes, I was actually, <laughs> but I, I couldn't make it to the old, but it had nothing to do with anyone being dropped or left out and what, whatever else. But as I, as I said, it's no surprise to see no one turning up at the Oval because fans have been staying away in droves from the long format of the game for, for quite some time. And given that the West Indies are, are performing, whether they're Trinidad in it or not, it's completely irrelevant. It is a reflection of a tremendous level of disillusionment with West Indies cricket. Yeah, Faz, thanks very much for chatting to us. We'll chat again tomorrow after the third day of the fourth Ashes Test and the second day of this West Indies versus India 100th Test. Take care. We take a break. We'll be back with Interactive.